Okay then my friends, so first of all you're going to notice I've already stripped the content back to the bare bones so that we only have this main function which is required and inside that we invoke the run app function to kickstart the app. Now the run app function needs to take in a root widget as an argument which is why we're getting an error at the moment because we're not passing in jack currently. Now in the starter project code, it was actually a custom widget called my app, which was passed into this function. And that my app class was created down here somewhere in the same file, but we're not gonna use a custom widget to begin with as the root widget. Instead, we're just gonna pass in a pre-built widget called material app into this function. And this is a widget you're gonna see quite a lot in Flutter applications, somewhere near the top of the widgets tree. It acts as a kind of wrapper, I guess, to the whole application. And when we use it, it applies Google's material design styles or makes them available, should I say, to all of the built-in core widgets like buttons, app bars, text, and other things. And that means that when we use this material app widget, almost everything looks pretty good on a screen right away with minimal extra styles. So I quite like to use this material app widget myself because it means I can just get up and running pretty quickly and boilerplate my application without worrying too much about any styles to begin with. And then when I need to, I can customize styles and override them to make my application a bit more unique, all right? So I would always recommend using this material app to begin with. Now, in order to use this, we need to import this package at the top of the file. It's a core package provided by Flutter, so we've not had to install anything extra, and it should already be there at the top of this file in the starter code, okay? Now, we're gonna talk a little bit more about inputs later, but we do need to add this material input at the top for now in order to use this material app widget, so make sure it's there in your file. All right then. So the material app widget accepts a bunch of different optional named arguments when we use it. And you can actually see a list of those arguments if you hover over it. So all the argument names are in white and their respective types are gonna be in green. And this would be the same for any widget that you hover over. We're gonna see a list of the argument names and the types they should be. Now the argument in this case that we're interested in is the home argument, which should be of type widget. So. I'm gonna add this argument in, which is called home, and then add a colon to provide a value. Now, if we hover over the argument name now, we're gonna see some information about the argument. We can see that its value should be a widget. And also, it says that this will be the widget that shows, for the default route of the app, the home route. Now, in other words, this is the widget that's gonna show by default on the home screen when we start up the application, okay? So to begin with, I'm just gonna add a pre-made text widget to output some text on the home screen. And by the way, you're gonna see a load of blue squiggles under my code right here. And these aren't errors in my code, these are just code suggestions to improve the performance of Flutter. If we hover over this blue squiggle, it's saying that we should use const with the widget constructor to improve the performance. So we can do this by coming to the start of the blue squiggle and adding const before we invoke this constructor for the material app widget. Now, this helps with performance because if we tell Flutter something is a constant, it knows then that the value won't change after compile time, right? And therefore, if the widget tree ever gets rebuilt, anything with a const in front of it can be reused again rather than rebuilt from scratch because Flutter knows it's a constant and its value is always gonna be the same, okay? So you will see from time to time Flutter giving us this feedback in the form of a blue squiggly line. And when you see one of those, more often than not, it means we can optimize performance by making something a constant. You might also see red error lines when something that was previously a const cannot be one anymore, where we might have changed something within that widget, in which case we just remove the const keyword. So you're gonna see quite a lot of this as we go forward. Anyway, let's preview this application now in the emulator. Okay, so I just saved that file and we get a big error over here, but don't worry about that. Just come to the green refresh button and hit that refresh button and then hopefully we should see the error go away, but we do see some really horrible looking text at the top with a, a double yellow line underneath it. And it's actually kind of going under some of the system values like the time here, the camera over here, something else over here, it might be the battery level on the right. So it looks terrible. So what's going on then? Because I thought we used the material app widget to wrap everything so that things like this get styled nicely out of the box. 
Well, they do, but in the case of text widgets, they need to be placed within something called a material ancestor widget in order for them to be styled correctly. We can actually see this example on the Flutter docs right here where it shows us this big red ugly text and it says that text widgets that lack a material ancestor will be rendered this way. Now, one such material ancestor widget is the scaffold widget. So we could use a scaffold as the value to the home argument rather than a text widget. And then as the body of the scaffold, we can output some text, which could then be styled nicely by material design. So the scaffold widget is another widget you're gonna find quite often in Flutter applications near the very top of the widget tree as well. It provides us with essentially a base layout for the application with the option to have an app bar at the top for a title and maybe some icons or buttons in there as well. We can add side drawers and navigation to the scaffold if we want. And we can also specify a body property for the actual body content of the application. So let's try adding one of these into our application. So then I'm gonna grab this thing right here, this text for now, and I'm gonna cut it. And I'm gonna replace that with a scaffold, like so, as the value to the home property. Okay, so inside the scaffold, we can pass through multiple different named arguments. One of those is an app bar argument, and that is gonna be an app bar widget. So this is so we get a little app bar at the top and you can put the title in here plus other things later on if you want, like little icons or buttons. And inside here, we can say the title of the app bar. Now this is gonna be a text widget. So we don't just give a title like this, we actually use a text widget. And pretty much any time we wanna render some text somewhere, we use a text widget. So we say text, and then inside here, we can say, I don't know, my coffee, oops, spell it correctly, coffee ID or coffee card or whatever you wanna call it. And then a comma, so we can add another property after this. Always comma separate these different named arguments. Just get into the habit of putting a comma at the end of it. So if you come to add another one, then we already have that comma, all right? So next we have, I don't know, maybe a background color we can give to this. And we're gonna use the colors class built into Flutter to provide a background color. And we'll say colors.brown. So it has a bunch of different colors built into this, by the way. If we say dot, you can see all these different colors right here that we can use from material design. So I'm gonna say dot brown, because coffee's brown at the end of the day. And then in square brackets, we can give this a strength. So 100 would be a very faint brown and then 900 would be a very dark brown. I'm gonna go for 700, which is fairly dark. And then after that, I'm gonna say I want to center the title because I want the title to be in the middle. In fact, before we do that, we won't add center title. We'll preview this in a second, first of all. Now, notice this, we're getting red squiggly lines. And if you hover over this, it says the constructor being called isn't a const constructor try removing const from the constructor. So, you know like before, we got the blue squiggly line saying we need to add a constant here to improve performance, but now we've added this app bar, it can no longer be a constant. Just because of the way app bars work, this can't be a constant anymore. So, we can take that const off, and now we can see the error goes away, but we do get a blue squiggly line here saying that this could be a constant now, so we can add const right here. Okay, so now we have an app bar. Let's save that. We're not gonna get an automatic refresh just yet. I'll explain why later, but we can restart the application by clicking on this arrow, and then we should see this app bar at the top right here now, awesome. Okay, so you can see the title is on the left. I want it to be in the center, which is the other property I was gonna add. So I can say center title, and I'm gonna set that to be true, a boolean. Save it. And then obviously now we have to refresh over here or restart. We should see this scoot to the middle. Awesome. All right, so that was the first argument at bar for this scaffold widget. The second one is gonna be a body property. And this body is basically just the body content of the application, so everything under the app bar. Now I want it to be the text widget that we had before. So text and then hello, comma, ninjas, like so. And then because this is blue, we can add a const right here to improve performance. All right, sorted. So now if I save this, 
we should see if I refresh over here this text in the body, which we do. Okay then, so we're slowly getting some content onto the screen, which is good, and we've seen how to use these two special built-in widgets, Material App and Scaffold, which you'll typically find up at the top of a widget tree to wrap the rest of the content. Now, I generally always start with a Material App widget, shortly followed by a Scaffold at some point, to wrap the entire screen content. And then the rest of the content for the screen gets built up inside this body property, where we currently just output some text. Now, in the future, when you have multiple routes or multiple screens, you'll probably have a single material app widget that wraps all of those routes and all of those screens. And then within each different screen, you'll have its own scaffold for that screen or route. So that each screen can have its own app bar with its own title and its own body content. Currently, we don't have multiple screens or routes, so we don't need to think too much about that yet. Anyway, everything seems to be working correctly so far, but there is one small problem with the development experience at the moment. And that is whenever we make a change to the content, for example, the body text or the app bar title, and then we save the file, we don't see any hot reload going on over here to see those changes in the phone, the emulator. Instead, we have to manually restart the app by pressing this green arrow over here. And that rebuilds the app so we can see those updates. But it would be nice if we could just make a change, save the file, and have an automatic hot reload to see those changes live in the emulator. And we can do that. But to do it, we have to talk about stateless widgets and the build function, which we're going to do in the next lesson.